Great, I think we're live now. Thank you so much, Luke, for making it to this meeting. We've been wanting to meet for a while now, and I thought we would have a really insightful conversation because I know your company, I know what you guys been through, and I, and I want to unpack that. So it would be great if you can tell us a little bit about you, how you got into HR, your experience in the HR field, you know, in the region, and also your current experience with your company. Awesome, yeah, thanks, Rose. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my journey with HR, I guess, started um, back in hospitality days. Um, obviously, in hospitality, dealing with a lot of people, uh, managing a, a lot of staff. Um, yeah, so from there, it sort of grew, um, and I stepped out of hospitality into various sectors like property development um, and uh, brand agencies. And yeah, I looked, uh, was doing people operations um, for the most part for, I suppose, eight to eight to 10 years, uh, and most recently then have branched into the software development space, um, where I've had uh, about two or three years experience as, as a head of people. I uh, currently work at Spetno. Uh, we're a company of uh, 52. Um, yeah, we're based in, in Cape Town uh, in Century City. Nice. I didn't know that you have had that kind of like experience in other industries before. But as you said, you can always link back, you know, experience in, in other industries and um, to, to the work that you do in HR because it's all people mm. related. So I, I, I always find that people that have that kind of diversity in the experience actually come, you know, to HR with, with, a, mm. with a lot of um, good experience. Yeah, it was actually interesting. I've actually just come from a, a, one of my HR sort of community networking events, um, and we were just saying that a lot of the sort of new age HR people um, or people that are in people mostly come from marketing backgrounds, consulting backgrounds, uh, and not really the traditional HR route. Uh, and that's why I think there's such a sort of fresh perspective um, and sort of a new dynamic of of people and HR emerging um, yeah. in the current climate. Yeah, very true. Cool. Um, you know, this conversation is all about retention for us. It's, it's really exploring and deep diving in HR, but related on how we retain, how we take care of people when once they've been hired and they're part of the company. And mm. what I really want explore with you was this thing around high growth because i know that's what your company experienced um since you know starting to where you guys are at now so i'd love for you to tell us a little bit about you know how many years um like how um yeah old the company mm. is and so kind of those growth spurs that you've been through and then we can mm. take it from there Awesome, yeah. Um, so I haven't been with Techno for the, I suppose, their full growth um, over the five years, um, but I do, I do have all the figures and the history. Um, and I suppose what we're doing now is is similar to what uh, what they did back then, and, and giving the opportunity to, to individuals. Um, so yeah, I mean, they started in 2018. There was three of them. Uh, it's 2023 now. They're a company of 50, 52. Um, and yeah, I'm looking to to go through another growth phase next year. Um, that's for sure. Um, and then yeah, I suppose over the years they sort of uh, doubled in size. They went from uh, three to seven to fourteen, uh, and then in 2021 they jumped from fourteen to thirty-two. So they saw 128 percent growth, um, which is which is pretty huge in the midst of a global pandemic, which is um, was quite unheard of. So I guess when people at the time where people were doing mostly uh, retrenchments, they were hiring. Um, yeah, and then it sort of uh, slowed down uh, and plateaued from them, and, um, and but it's, we've we've kept on growing, um, going up about seventy five percent every year. We went from thirty two to forty one to to fifty two, uh, and well, fifty three at the end of this month. We're about to uh, onboard onboard someone new at the end of this month, so so that's uh, super exciting. Um, and yeah, I think. I think they obviously Specno is a super young company, started by two very young founders uh, who are yeah amazing, amazing people, um, just really dynamic in their approach to to how they build culture and uh, sort of how they do business, um, and got such great intentions behind the business that they do, um, wanting to you know service uh, and help uh, a million entrepreneurs with tech-enabled businesses uh, by twenty. 
2030, uh, which is a very ambitious goal. Um, but, you know, courageously ambitious is one of our values, so, so it only makes sense. Um, and I think how they retained talent and how we still currently retain talent is basically giving young people starting their careers, um, maybe with one or two years of experience, um, hiring young and giving them really an opportunity to learn to fail uh, and like provide uh, fostering an environment that, that gives them hyper growth opportunity. Um, so if you come into Spectre, we're a high performance team. Um, we deliver high quality work. So if you are young and ambitious, there is such amazing room for you to grow um, and so many opportunities um, for you to learn. Uh, which I think has been a, a huge, a huge positive uh, attribute to to our retention rate, um, which has never dropped below eighty, uh, which is eighty percent. Which is, um, yeah, I mean, in my experience, is is pretty pretty decent. Um, yeah, I mean, that's I think through hyper growth phase, you're obviously hiring left, right, and center, um, and I think first and foremost, big note hiring. Uh, process is, is really rigorous. So the people we bring on, uh, we are more than certain that they will excel and thrive in the environment that we've created. Um, and then it's really just up to them. And I guess once they come into that environment and they start operating in it, um, and they see how inclusive the culture is and how we all are just there to, to be our best selves and, you know, um just work but also have like really good times um it's sort of i guess pr promote them to stay um and that's how we i suppose retain talent yeah that's so interesting what you said that um you are focused on hiring young right and i think it, there's something to be said about also because the company is young right five years old and then you get young people so there's definitely alignment in terms of because I guess if you have a company with like 50 years in the market, it, there's already like a presence there that when you hire a young person, there's there's some sort of like alignment that needs to be done. But with Specno, you obviously have that, you know, the company's young, you're hiring young. Mm -hmm. There's that kind of energy that everybody starts with. And I'm sure it's going to be interesting to see as the time goes how your, your staff complement your people uh, grow with you and then also that seniority you know of like um kind of keeping them for for a long time because obviously that's that's what the company wants make sure that mm. it will grow with the company so what you mentioned in terms of that kind of visual of growth plans that you already have in place from from starting i'm sure it makes a huge difference as to how people see you know those uh opportunities and know that okay this is for the long run so that that mm. is a great strategy um, yeah. and to have that from the word go is it's key yeah I mean exactly uh, I think I'm the I think I'm the second oldest in the company um, or the third I'm not sure um, but it, the company is so young and obviously the leadership team is also young um, and yeah I mean we're, we're at a stage now where we're looking to add leaders uh, into the leadership team and we are growing, so we're opening up positions uh, that were never really there before when the company was smaller. So, you know, there's we're adding we're adding in these layers of of management, um, and those opportunities are popping up. So, anyone anyone who's in the company can see that. Okay, cool. You know, um, this is where I can take my career. This is the opportunity that that Spectre can give me. They're opening up all these positions. Uh, I want to stay at the company because, yeah, I mean, I can, you know, do my best work here and learn uh, and grow and, you know, move into these into these management or leadership positions. Um, and we're obviously just super fortunate that that, you know, we can afford to give our employees uh, those opportunities. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Nice. Um, and then when it comes to maybe not only your experience in Spekno, but also, you know, the work that you have done before, and we look at mm. South Africa and also our region, Western Cape, what do you think in terms of the retention strategies? What what does um, work or what the, what influences the, the employee turnover? How are companies in this day and age making sure that people stay longer with them? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting it's an interesting topic, um, which I think we can touch on maybe after the strategies is, is how long people should stay at companies. Um, yeah, we can touch on that just now, maybe. I think what I am seeing at the moment in terms of retention strategies, uh, especially obviously post COVID, um, is things like you know um, hyper growth opportunities, which, like like I said, fortunately Specna can afford to give people, um, and then it's things like uh, working policies, remote versus hybrid versus in office. I think people want that flexibility now. Uh, especially in young companies uh, and tech companies, people want to have the opportunity to leave for six weeks and go and work abroad. Um, and they want the flexibility of the working hours. Uh, they want to be able to work their own hours um, and sort of, you know, find their level of work-life satisfaction that that works for them. And I think that if companies can afford to put those policies in place, they will start attracting uh, remarkable talent, but they'll um, and they'll also start, uh, you know, increasing their, their talent ret- uh, retention rates. Um, yeah, and then if, uh, I suppose company leadership is, is another big thing that I've I've noticed. Um, jumping from a few companies in and around the Western Cape, uh, I think, yeah, and and I mean even in South Africa, I think leadership cannot be overlooked. I think uh, it's a huge part, especially to retaining talent. Um, and leadership is a, probably a good segue to to chat about culture. I don't think you can overlook culture either. I think it's probably, if not the most important thing to retain talent uh, is culture, culture, culture. Um, yeah, if the culture is good, the people will the people will stay. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Uh, and it's about p- providing uh, an environment and a culture where people feel welcome, they feel appreciated, um, they feel included. Um, it has uh, a high degree of diversity. It has representation, um, and it's of, and of, and and it's engaging. Um, I think there's nothing worse than being in an environment that no one talks to each other, no one really says hello. Um, I think that can only lead to to people leaving the company uh, versus a culture that's you know inclusive and and everyone's happy to be at work uh, and everyone's a team player and they love collaborating. Um, yeah, you just got to make the workplace uh, a fun environment. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, and it was very interesting what you said at the beginning in terms of like how long do you want people to stay because. I, I look at talent retention as like obviously the you know the more uh, seniority people can have it's like a it would be like a good metric of how you're retaining talent right like if your average median employee stays for five years you know that's that's great or but the reality is that there's certain roles that actually have proven that the the high turnover or the you know like less average seniority it's not a bad thing because people do move, you know, there's particular roles, mostly if it is entry level, you do want to grow, right? So that means that if they mm-hmm. jump to another role, that's great. But also if there is a high turnover, yes, there could be because of the, for example, sales team, a customer service, call center that will have a higher turnover. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's natural mm-hmm. that those people will have higher ter- turnover the question maybe is like do you move them in your company which is quite ideal or you know it's just that you're going to have a constant recruitment of you know new people so those things for companies to be decided but that, that idea that you know looking at your retention average number is, is it's a good metric to have but it's not necessarily also telling of like how your culture or your business um is able to retain talent if that if that makes sense yeah and then, yeah i agree on the culture front i wanted to say you know i because we consult we have quite a you know a client base of, of companies that we go and work for i always say you know you, you put your first foot in, in that client office and you breathe you know like w- mm. the culture you know without with small interactions how people say hi you know how people you know like are um you know in the space you know are they relaxed or is everybody kind of you know do they have cubicles or and you, you really can't tell of the culture it happened to me when i went to your company that one of the first interactions that i had was like 
guys, I need internet. There's a message that I need to send my computer. I came like that. And then, then it was just so people centric on me that it was like, okay, Rose, that's your room, kind of sort yourself out and then we can have a good start. And it was like, I felt taken care of. And I'm like, you know, someone that's coming from outside and that was really telling, you know, of what you guys Amazing. had in your business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, speaking okay, yeah. to the culture point that you were referring to. Awesome. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, if I can just jump back quickly to the, the retention rate, I think it is, uh, uh, I suppose it's like proof of where people in HR are going, where retention rates used to be something that companies would strive to hit 100% on. Um, and that's just not the case anymore. I think turnover is natural. Um, but I, I mean, I'd take it a step further and say I'd actually encourage turnover, um, you know, uh, in cycles. I think especially in a company like us, we obviously hiring young straight out of um, straight out of university, sometimes one or two years experience. Uh, so naturally, you know, it's, it's people's first jobs. Um, mm -hmm. And we don't, I mean, we don't behold them to, to stay at the company forever. Um, there's obviously, there's obviously, I mean, it's obviously that they're gonna, they're gonna um, move on uh, sooner or later. And yeah, I think we, we were actually just saying now that, you know, there were a few companies um, in my network where their tenure for employees was, you know, anywhere from five to 10 years. Um, and I think it, that sort of leads to a stale culture. Uh, it leads to a stale culture, it leads to a very high payroll. Um, you know, there's a lot of negatives around that. So I don't necessarily think having a low retention rate is a bad thing. Um, it all depends on your business. Um, mm and and how you service your business um you know for for us it's uh we don't place too high emphasis on on retention rate um it's more about keeping you know if people want to go and go off and do their thing then they're going to go off and do their thing and we don't want to hold them to that um and we also need to be conscious of the fact that we are not a single product company we sell billable hours um, and we have to keep our average salaries uh, to a point where we can maintain maintain them. Uh, and mm. and and you know, the longer people stay, obviously the the higher their salaries go. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't become um, sort of viable for the business model. Um, mm. So I do think people, yeah, they. I mean, I wouldn't place too much emphasis on on retention rates. Um, I suppose depending on on the nature of your business. Yeah, yeah, you have a, a really valid point. Um, and then on the other side of that point is that what you also see when you look at it from the employee point of view in, in companies, usually um, what happens is that people will be in the lookout for another job, um, mm -hmm. mostly from to, to get that jump in salary, right? I mean, obviously you could be unhappy with the culture and other things as well, and that makes you look elsewhere. But at the same time, if people want to benchmark their service, and obviously everybody wants to think about their, you know, financial growth and, and things like that, then the main reason to to really be looking elsewhere is is related to that um, salary jump that people can do. So it is such a, you know, kind of fine tuning game in terms of what you're seeing. If you've been long for the company, obviously your CTC grows with you to the point where the company needs to look back and say, okay, this is the output we're getting. Is it making sense? Is it on the top mm -hmm. of the benchmark? And then people also upping that by you know looking for other jobs out elsewhere um you know when there's like kind of not so much offer and more demand and things like that so it is it is a really you know constant um tuning in companies need to do to to get that right mm -hmm. now um for you and and maybe yeah speak or other um experience that you've had in the past what have been the most Kind of innovative ways for you to improve your talent retention when when it was needed yeah yeah sure it's a great question um i've got a few i sort of got quite a few points here um that have have worked for us and are working for us um i think the the biggest thing for us is we try and give uh our spec not a a 10 percent raise uh every six months which yeah it's kind of unheard of um 
at least I haven't heard of anything like that until I joined Specno. Um, and that obviously is a huge incentive for people to stay at the company. Um, so that is that is one of the biggest things. Um, we obviously have the non-monetary incentives to promote talent retention. Like we have all the in-office benefits. You know, we get lunches three times a week, um, which helps with productivity as well. So, you know, obviously it encourages people to come to the office, um, which obviously promotes a, a, a foster collaboration then online. Um, and it also, yeah, it, it just takes that hassle out of people having to worry about where the lunch uh, or breakfast is coming from. Um, yeah, and we have uh, we have a, a very a very amazing employee engagement program or strategy, uh, if you will. We do a lot of department events, we do a lot of company events, um, we do a lot of community events, a lot of outreach events. Um, so, yeah, I think it just gives people in the company obviously something to look forward to uh, a place to engage with get engage with each other outside of the project that they're working on uh, which all sort of which all promotes um, which all promotes culture uh, and like I said in the beginning you know the the better your culture the more people are inclined to stay at the company um, we have a wellness program as well so we have uh, we use a company called Ali Health, which I'm sure you know of. Um, that gives our employees access to counselors when they need. Uh, so yeah, we're really looking at at you know putting employee wellness uh, really front and center. Um, yeah, I think the 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 old HR health checks uh, play a huge role for us. Uh, just gathering data from from the people, listening to to what needs to be improved, uh, and then actually actioning it. I think it's one mm. thing to to just send out poll surveys to like gather data to see how happy people are. I think it's another thing um, to to act on it, which I think uh, is where most companies fail. Um, mm. So really, just you know, taking that that data that that you get from them and and implementing, showing showing the team that you are listening to them, you are making a change, um, you are looking to improve this, or you know, be more transparent about that. Um, yeah. I think, uh, like I said in the beginning, our career opportunities and our career development uh, is really amazing. Uh, it's probably the best in I've ever seen in all the companies I've worked for. So, yeah, I think if you if you join Specno, you are yeah you're well on your way to to fast tracking your career um, and seeing hyper growth in it. So that's always a, a huge benefit to incentivize people to stay at the company. Um, and then yeah, I guess culture, culture, culture. Uh, it's yeah, all centered around our values, um, building an incredible culture, giving people um, one of our values is extreme ownership, and that you know, giving people the opportunity to take extreme ownership of their work, uh, and you know, fostering putting them in an environment where they feel trusted and they have autonomy, uh, and they aren't afraid of, aren't afraid to fail. Um, and yeah, I think if you give people that space, they are definitely more inclined to to stay at your company. Um, mm. You know, it eliminates the it eliminates the resentment buildup that you often see between employees and managers or employees in the company. It eliminates the I don't want to go to work factor. You know, um, so yeah, I think uh, those are those are the the strategies that are working so far for us. Um, obviously always yeah. looking to innovate and improve but yeah i think those are those are where we are at at the moment yeah uh, it's amazing it's it's a lot that you guys do and and you can also see how they are geared up for the gen c generation which is what we were speaking about before you know in terms of you know the higher young and, and I, I love what you said about yeah you probably have a remote working but also coming to work but the days that they come to work there's a lunch break right and and mm. how nice is that it eliminates, as you said, uh, you know, the admin around it, logistics around it. It also um, creates that kind of like culture in terms of that social moment that you want to create, mm. the collaboration and the team engagement. So it's it's such a nice way because, yes, it is, you know, come to the office, but then there's this added on, which is a really nice, refreshing way to, to yeah. see the implementation of, um, you know, working from the office. And yeah. And I'm I think. Sorry, I was just. I was just going yeah. to say. I think. I think because we we operate in such a high performance environment and demand such a, a high quality from from the team. Um, something as small as 
like you know what do i take for lunch to work or you know do i have to like cooking up a dinner to take to work for lunch tomorrow it can be like a big thing um and i i don't think uh people realize that so being able to afford them that is is really like it's just so nice yeah no it's incredible i don't think it's a small thing at all i know that you hire me and so people probably don't have kids but when you have kids you know and you go to work and you have lunch because i was at your offices the day they were doing the lunch and i can vouch for how nice that was because it also you know when it comes to you the company showcasing your company you, you're inviting external people on that particular day for the lunch so it's that added on as well the networking mm. the help you bring your potential clients into this lunch so then you have them interact with your team members so it's it's an all-rounder win strategy yeah um, yeah it's a great it's a great marketing tool um you know clients come in uh and they see everyone working together they see how good the vibe in the office is and they're like well you know why would i not want these people to build our product for us um mm. so yeah i think if 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 anything you can if you don't have budget in your in your hr budget then just dip into the marketing budget and start providing employees with some lunch yeah yeah nice that, nice because they you spoke a little bit about the kind of internal doings of hr in terms of how you use your budget for these initiatives mm-hmm. and what i hear fr- what i wanted to hear from you in terms of this the internal kind of workings of your hr department i love to hear how do you report to your you know your executive team in terms of these um hr initiatives your retention strategies how do you yeah showcase it and, and show it to your company yeah um i mean it's a great question uh it's a tough one for me to answer because um i thought you do have an esco it's obviously our ceo and coo but uh there are i mean they're, they're one of the team you know um so it doesn't really feel like they're an exco um but yeah we still obviously have to report to them and i do have a, a weekly check-in with with the coo um which you know we talk about anything from recruitment to uh what's happening in the company um if there's any sort of challenges we're facing with people or people having any challenges that sort of thing um but as far as like the strategies and stuff go i think you know i work so closely with them on the strategies that I don't necessarily have to report back to them because they see the data on a weekly basis anyway, uh, and mm-hmm. we're looking at the same thing. But I think if I had to report back to them, um, and I had to do a report for Exco, uh, I would look at things sort of like retention rates for our period versus the last period, um, and sort of how it's affected our average salaries, uh, whether it's been a positive uh, retention rate or a negative retention rate. Um, which is what I was alluding to earlier. Sometimes turnover is good, sometimes it's not good. Um, I would look at voluntary versus involuntary separations. Uh, I think that's a big thing. Uh, you obviously you obviously want people to voluntarily leave. You never want uh, people to involuntarily leave. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose there are reasons for leaving. I think exit interviews are a big thing, uh, which people overlook. Um, and I think it's a great way to get data to improve improve your retention rates um, if there are no um, or if they are having a negative effect on your business. Um, I think that's yeah those are the, those are the points that I would touch on uh, if I did have to report to them. But like I said, we we work so closely on this that uh, and I'm fortunate enough that I can work so closely with them on this. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really do a, a weekly report on this. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like you've got a good pulse of what's going on and you have that good channel of communication on a weekly basis. So it's like you walk the journey so closely um, mm. that that's how it works and how it's efficient. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's yeah. lovely to hear. Lovely, as you said, yeah. you have that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, like, and like I said earlier as well, uh, retention rate for us particularly uh, hasn't really been uh it's sort of like a a be all and end all metric that we live and die by um so it's not really something that yeah i mean we obviously pay close attention to it but it's not uh it's, if it goes down or up it's not uh we're not going to lose sleep over it i hear you it's like you said more as engagement is important if there was any metric exactly. that you like it's actually engagement not so much retention yeah, I, I mean, that also speaks to retention as well. Though. So our biggest thing is to, um, which is one of my, well, one of my OKLs, I guess, is um, 
to maintain a, an A plus on our on our pulse uh, or employee satisfaction score. Um, so yeah, I think employee satisfaction for us is is one that we are like really geared to to monitoring and improving and. We just really want our employees to to have their best lives at at Specno, um, and yeah, I suppose the more satisfied your employee, the higher your attention rate will be. So, you know, that's one that we measure measure quite a lot. Um, and yeah, I think in that we send out a quarterly pulse survey um, where I will ask questions that, um, uh, that cover five areas. Uh, they cover your team, your peers, the confidence in leadership. Uh, confidence in the company moving forward um, and just their general happiness to work uh, at work uh, so you know well-being headspace mental all of that stuff uh, so we'll do that once a quarter and then um, if there is a big company announcement or we go through a, a big change or something we'll do like a like a quick fire pulse survey just to check in where everyone is so we do use pulse surveys quite a lot um, and we obviously we attach uh, the employee satisfaction employee satisfaction metric to that uh, which is which is hugely important for us uh, and allows us to to retain our talent mm. yeah that's so amazing i mean you said it yourself and you know we we have a similar offering with pulse but it's it's really everything to be able to have an open channel of communication with your staff members and to know that mm. you can hr is the the channel for that communication and then to to have these spaces with a full team where these these conversations can be had you know there's full visibility transparency and you really can have it you know better than that i the only thing that i'll add to that is what i love seeing in those spaces is that it's it's about a two-way where yes we definitely bring the the component of what staff is going through and then also you know bringing down all this kind of business in terms of you know that that very visual vision that you guys have in Spain mm. and America it's really nice because it really is um yeah it's very kind of easy to to follow to track right mm. um I'd love to hear from you because this is like a 2028 goal um how are you guys doing <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's an interesting question. Um, I think I think the vision can sometimes be misconstrued. Um, we don't want to build uh, a million apps by twenty thirty. We just want to um, enable a million entrepreneurs by twenty thirty uh, with tech. So you know, I think uh, our CEO has got the calculation down somewhere. I'll have to go and check what it's like we should actually we actually need to put up something in the office with like a I'm going to how, say. How <laughs> getting. um but i mean so far so far we've helped uh we've helped 150 businesses um and i think we averaged out that for every business that we helped uh it would have i think it would reach you know 20 or 30 people um at a conservative guess so if you do the math on that i'm not actually sure where we are uh to be honest but that's great. I mean, it's it's really you know like seeing that journey, right? And how it it goes back to that big big vision and how how progress is taking place. And I know that you guys also have a global kind of view of where you want to take things at, and that adds quite a a nice dynamic as well from the staff point of view and and growth point of view. That it it will be mm. it's really interesting to know that you're tapping on other markets and wanting to help people from other places. It's mm. um, yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah, I think that's that's been an interesting journey. Um, we we obviously we do have uh, quite a another ambitious goal to be in a hundred city a hundred cities in the next five years. Um, an ambitious which, goal. <laughs> it is an ambitious goal, um, especially in the current in the current market. Um, but yeah, I think as far as talent attraction goes, obviously that's very attractive to, to anyone wanting to come into Specno. Uh, and it also, um, I suppose, incentivizes people to stay a bit longer at Specno to, you know, sort of see out our expansion into into the, the various cities because it's going to open up opportunities for them as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's been a, a very interesting journey. Um, one that is currently, I'd say we're a little bit behind on our goal. Um, but it is looking promising for next year. So especially with our our recent sort of uh, capital raise slash merger with uh, or acquisition by by the Swedish company Q Group. So um, which is 
yeah, I suppose given us nice nice capital to to expand. So um, yeah, watch uh, watch the space. Yeah, sounds really exciting. We'll definitely have to do uh, kind of a, a next session to know where you guys are at. <laughs> Yeah, that'll definitely be, hopefully it'll be a super hyper growth uh, period. So we can talk about retention and attraction strategies uh, over that. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you mentioned you are at the 50 mark in five years and now it seems like you're going to experience another kind of spurt. So every spurt and taking from zero to 50, it's maybe a different journey from 50 to 100 and and how you as hr manage that growth and global as well with mm. you know set of policies and all all that that brings it's it's a hell of an interesting journey yeah yeah it is um especially with you know obviously looking to expand into into the global market i think that's uh, going to be our next big challenge uh you know we've got such an amazing culture that's rooted here in south africa um and the more hires we bring in on board uh the more remote they are um and with an expansion globally to another city they obviously like it brings with it all its challenges around culture differences and stuff but it's all about how you uh transfer the the spectno culture that we've created um and the values that we live by here into into that other culture and and into the global expansion so That'll be our next big challenge, which uh, I'm really looking forward to. Amazing. Cool. Thank you so much for the chat, Luke. So much to learn about what you guys do and, and a lot of really good tips for anybody that's, you know, wanting to hear what companies here are doing and also in this, you know, high growth stage and moving global. So thank you so much for everything that you have to share. Thank you, Rose. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to chat to you. Yes. Have a lovely day ahead. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.